بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد. Let's look at the story of creation. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said, In the beginning there was Allah. There was nothing before him. In other narration, nothing was with him. And his throne was on water. And he wrote in the tablet everything. And he created the heavens and the earth. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels. The second pillar of our faith is belief in the angels. SubhanAllah, when you think about that, this creation is amazing and it truly does serve an integral role in our Iman and in our faith. They are such a phenomenal creation that they are created from the most beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is light, a nur. They're not male or female. They don't have a gender. They don't want to eat or drink. They don't mate. So you don't have angel husbands and wives that have children. That, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is simply creating them perpetually. Uh, they don't get tired, that they glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. They never even feel a sense of fatigue. They don't need a Jannah to motivate them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've been created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't disobey a single command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do exactly as they've been commanded. Is that sometimes we think the angels are robots. They have no character. But we find that the angels have plenty of character. They love certain things, they hate certain things, they incline towards certain things. Prophet Muhammad Sallam, and this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, the angels say to Allah that man intends to do evil, although he is more vigilant than them. He replies, watch him. If he commits evil, record it in kind. But if he abandons it, record for him one good deed, for surely he gave it up for my sake. So they have the ability to read human mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the angels into messengers with wings. So they fly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they have wings that are two pairs or three or four. And then maybe more. Yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha. And he increases in creation what he will. Allah's messenger had seen angel Gabriel in his natural state in which he had 600 wings each of which filled the horizon. And they were like multicolored drops of pearls and coral falling from the wings. They are enormous in size. One of the angels that carry the throne of Allah. Between the flesh of his ear and the tip of his shoulder, this angel is the distance of a 700 years travel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of making their appearance in a certain way. However, all of them are created from nur, all of them are created from light, and all of them are beautiful. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the appearance to certain people uh, depending on who they are and depending on who those angels are as well. So even with the angel of death when he comes to us and when he comes with his helpers, everyone sees him differently. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the believer as he's leaving this world, he sees very beautiful faces. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Al-Baytul Ma'mur is visited by 70,000 angels every day and they never come back again. What is Al-Baytul Ma'mur? Al-Baytul Ma'mur is the creation of the heavens equivalent to al kaaba to us. Just as we make tawaf around al kaaba angels will make tawaf around Al-Baytul Ma'mur. Do you understand the implications of that? When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that every day a new group of 70,000 angels would visit the established house, how many angels are there? If on a daily basis you have 70,000 angels visiting it and they never come back again, how many angels are there? And how long has this been going on? For how many thousands and millions and billions of years? So you multiply all of these days by 70,000. How many angels are there? Who are we compared to the world of angels? This massive creation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, The heavens above you are mourning, and they are justified to mourn. Because on every space equivalent to the size of four fingers, there is an angel bowing down in ruku or prostrating in sujood, worshipping Allah Azza wa These angels, each one of them have specific job that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that angel for. Allah the exalted and glorious has appointed an angel as the caretaker of the womb that says, My Lord, it is like an oily drop. 
My Lord, it is now like a leech. My Lord, it has become like a clump of chewed flesh. Then if Allah wishes to complete its creation, the angel will ask, My Lord, will it be male or female? When the fetus reaches the beginning of the fifth month, the angel breathes the soul into him. At that same time, four things are recorded. His livelihood, his lifespan, his deeds, whether he'll be wretched or happy. When Allah loves a slave, he calls on Jibreel. Who's Jibreel? You know who Jibreel is? The greatest of the Malaika. The one whom when the Prophet ﷺ saw, he fainted because of his wings had covered the horizon. Jibreel, the, the angel who's responsible for the most virtuous thing, which is conveying the revelation from Allah to the messengers of Allah. Jibreel, and what do you know about Jibreel? Allah said, whoever is adu, whoever is an enemy to, to Jibreel, then Allah is the enemy to the disbelievers. Allah defended Jibreel in the Quran. Jibreel, Jibreel, the one who took the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Al Isra Al Mi'raj in the ascension to the heavens. Jibreel, the the the, the malak which we we don't know what to say about because of his honor and his virtue in the sight of Allah. Imagine Allah in the above the heavens, above the throne, in His greatness and His majesty, which is beyond our human comprehension, calls out to Jibreel to inform him that He loves you. And then only that. فَأَحِبَّهُ Then He commands Jibreel to love you also. So Jibreel now loves you. Allah and Jibreel love you. But it doesn't end there. Jibreel then will call upon the inhabitants of the Sama. Who are they? All the Malaika. How many? We can even count trillions and trillions of Malaika which Allah created beyond our, again, human comprehension. All of them are commanded simultaneously to love you. First Jibreel says, Allah loves Fulan, so now you have to love him. Then all of the angels in the heavens love you. Then Allah will place acceptance for you on earth. So people will love you. Now what better than that? What else do you want? What else do you want? What? What? If you are a person whom Allah loves, in every movement you go, you do, you pray, you sleep, you whatever you do, you are among those whom Allah loves and Jibreel loves and the angel loves. What else do you want, ya akhi? You're guaranteed success in this life and in the life to come. Guaranteed. No way Allah will punish you. No way. No way Allah will punish someone whom He loves. And if Allah hates a slave, He also calls on Jibreel. And He informs Jibreel that He hates this person. So He will command Jibreel to hate this person. Then Jibreel will tell the angels to hate this person. Then Allah will put hatred for him on earth. La ilaha illallah. Imagine you walking upon the planet, the face of the earth which Allah created, while Allah hates you, and the angels hate you, and Jibreel hates you, and the righteous people hate you. What a sad state for a human being. Jibreel is also Ruh al Qudus, which means the Holy Spirit. So the angel Gabriel and the Holy Spirit are in fact one and the same. And it is very important then to note that the Holy Spirit is not some part of God. What about the status of the angels that fought on the day of Badr, right? They are the best of the angels, just as we have the best of the companions, those that fought on the day of Badr. 330 to fight against 1000. The Prophet ﷺ is watching. He raises his hands. Oh Allah, oh Allah, the victory that you had promised me. Oh Allah, the victory that you had promised me. Oh Allah, the victory that you had promised me. Then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes out of his tent, looks in the heavens and he says, Allahu Akbar, Jibreel with 3,000 angels descending down to support the believers. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fulfills his promise. Where Allah Azza wa Jal will give victory to those minority 313 
against the majority, 1,000 of disbelievers. Mikael is the angel that has been commissioned with managing the rainfall, the precipitation and the agriculture. Every single one of us has two angels that write down the deeds. The angel on the right writes down our good deeds and the angel on the left writes down our evil deeds. Prophet Muhammad said, every one of you has been assigned a companion from the, among the jinn and one from the angels. Each person has an angel assigned to him, encouraging him to good and guarding him from evil. Counteract the evil suggestions which would come from the evil source of the jinn. The, the angels which are assigned as a support to us, which are giving us good thoughts, at some times this, this angel may leave us. And this is what is referred to when Prophet Muhammad said that angels do not enter a house in which there is a dog or pictures or statues of living beings. Two angels of Babylon, Harut and Marut, that taught the people magic. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran is that these two angels were not disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, they were sent to test the people. And they told the people they did not uh, teach the people sihr, magic, until they said to the people, look, we are a test. Do not disobey, in, do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. Every soul must taste death. The angel of death is not bothered how powerful you are. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam asked him once, the O angel of death, show me the appearance that you undertake at the time of taking the soul of a good person, of an obedient person. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, what does he find in front of him? He finds a beautiful, handsome young man in front of him. More beautiful than him he has never seen in his whole life. Dressed all in white. A beautiful fragrance, beautiful musk was emanating from his body. A fragrance that Ibrahim والسلام, had never smelled before. Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, said to the angel of death, that if at the time of death there was no other joy, no other blessing for a good soul, then your appearance, this appearance that you have shown me would suffice, would be sufficient. Then Ibrahim requests him, the o angel, o angel of death, show me the appearance that you undertake at the time of taking a bad soul. He says to him, O Ibrahim, you will not be able to bear it, you will not be able to see it. Ibrahim insisted, angel of death says to him, turn away, turn your face away. He turns his face away. The angel of death then tells him to look. When Ibrahim والسلام, looked in front of him, what does he find? He finds a pitch black giant standing in front of him with long hair. All dressed in black. Pitch black giant standing in front of him. Rijlahu fil ard wa ra'suhu fil sama. His feet were on the earth and his head was in the sky. And an unbearable stench was emanating from his body. And fire was blazing out of his ears and from his nostrils. The hair on his body were like men. And fire was blazing out of the nostrils and out of the ears of these men. When Ibrahim والسلام, sees this scene, he fainted. After some time when he became conscious, he said to the angel of death, that if at the time of death, there is no other punishment for a sinner, then seeing you in this state alone would be sufficient for him. Munkar and Nakir, they will walk into your grave. They will sit you up. These angels, Allah had created in a very frightening form. They will sit you up and they will ask you questions. When they sit you up, I want you to feel your heart racing because you will be terrified. And with their voices like thunder and their eyes like lightning, they will ask you, who is your Lord? Who did you submit to? The mu'min will say, my Lord is Allah. They will ask, 
What is your way of life? The mu'min will say, my way of life is Islam, is submission to Allah. And what do you say about the man that was sent to you? You will say, he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they will say, sadaqt. You have said the truth, and they will order the grave to widen. And this grave will turn into a garden of paradise. On the other side, may Allah protect us. They will sit you up. And they will say, they will ask the same question. The person will not be able to answer. They will say, um, 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 I, I don't know. What's your way of life? Um, um, I don't know. They said, they said, in another hadith, they said we should submit. They said. And the angel will say, You have lied. You don't know anything. And they will order the grave to become a pit of hellfire. And the grave will start burning. Till the day of judgment. And the grave will squeeze and tighten. And become narrower and darker. Till every bone in your body breaks. And brothers and sisters, it doesn't stop there. But there are different forms of punishment in the grave. You have the guardian of hellfire and the guardian of paradise. As for the guardian of hellfire, his name is Malik. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people of hellfire would call out, O oh Malik, let your Lord finish us off. So Malik is a very severe angel who guards hellfire. And though hellfire has many guards, Malik is the chief of them. The Prophet ﷺ, even when he saw Malik, when he saw uh, you know, the keeper of hellfire, Malik, uh, Rasulullah ﷺ described the frightening appearance. I mean, Malik, uh, the Prophet ﷺ was shocked that he didn't smile, he didn't laugh, he didn't greet the Prophet ﷺ the way that other angels did. And when Rasulullah ﷺ asked Jibreel ﷺ about that, Jibreel ﷺ said that if he was to smile at anyone, it would be you, but he's never smiled since hellfire has been created. And Ridwan is Khazinul Jannah, he is the chief keeper of paradise. Ridwan uh, means uh, pleasure, so, so you enter by the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Israfil alayhi salam, that he is the one that will blow the trumpet to commence the day of judgments. The angel has raised the trumpet to his lips and he is waiting for the command from God to blow that trumpet. Allah the Almighty will order Israfil to blow through the horn this angel is such that his eyes are fixed on the throne of the Creator. This angel is such that he does not blink. Why? Fearing that he'll miss the command of Allah. This angel is such that one ring of his horn is bigger than the east and west put together. This angel is such that when he blows, he will blow and he will give you such a blow that every single thing in the universe will come to an end. The sound of the horn is so terrifying that you will see the mother who's got a child in her stomach, six months pregnant, seven months pregnant, eight months pregnant. She will drop her load. She will miscarry a baby. Why? Because the sound of the horn, the sound of the horn is so terrifying. Angel of death. It will say to Allah, Oh Allah, all those that are in the world and all those that are in the heaven, they have come to an end, except for all those who you wish to remain alive. Allah will say, who remains? And the angel of death will say, Oh Allah, Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, and the angels who are carrying your throne, they remain. Then Allah will say, Let death come to Jibreel. Let death come to Israfil. Let death come to Mikael. And let death come to all those angels who are carrying my throne. And then Allah will say, Who remains? And the angel of death will say, Oh Allah, you remain and I remain. And then Allah the Almighty will say, I created you for a purpose. You have fulfilled your purpose. You also die and you will die. And then Allah the Almighty, He will roll up all the heavens in His hands. He will roll up all the worlds in His hands. And Allah the Almighty, 
he will raise his voice and Allah will say, I am the Almighty Allah. I am the Almighty Allah. For whom is the divine rule today? For whom is the power today? For whom is the kingdom today? I am the king of all kings. Where are your dictators? Where are your oppressors? No one will answer. And only Allah will answer and Allah will say, power is for Allah. Might is for Allah. The one, the only, the irresistible. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he tells us that on the Day of Judgment, when Allah sets up the scales and the Prophet وسلم, said that if you were to place the entire heavens and the earth into the Mizan, into the scales, it would fit them. And in one narration, لَوَزِينَتْهُمْ It would weigh them accurately. When the scales are set up on the Day of Judgment, the angels will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, O oh Allah, لِمَنْ يَزِنُ هَذَا Who are these scales being set up for? I mean, they're afraid despite the fact that they've done nothing but worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're afraid. And Allah responds by saying, لِمَنْ أَشَاءُ مِنْ خَلْقِي For whoever I desire from my creation. So Allah left it vague that you also might have to go through the scales, though they don't have to go through the scales. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, at that moment, the angels will respond, سُبْحَانَكَ مَا عَبَدْنَاكَ حَقَّ عِبَادَتِكَ How perfect are you, glory be to you, we did not worship you as much as you deserve to be worshipped. Subhanallah. I mean, that's what the angels are saying who did nothing but worship Allah. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.